March 1988. Let's have a look what's in here. Well, I see that Atari and Commodore have plans to face the threat of the growing PC market by trying to appeal to more business users. Commodore says its 386-based PC should come in at under £5,000, which was about 6,300 US dollars at that date. And at today's prices, that would be equivalent to more than $16,000. So yeah, computers were really expensive back then. Uh, the magazine, however, was not. Uh, the cover price here is only 78 pence, which was a bit over a dollar in 1988. This is the first in a series of videos looking back at moments in computer history. I'm starting with March 1988 for the simple reason that that was when the first edition of Computer Shopper UK was launched. This is it. People in Britain of a certain age may recall that I wrote for Computer Shopper from that first issue and for many years thereafter. So I thought it would be interesting to take a journey back to 1988 and see what computing was like at that time. Well, on page 23, I see a review that I wrote comparing two new portable PCs from Amstrad and Toshiba. Amstrad's portable is hideous looking, big and heavy, with a huge keyboard and a tiny screen offset on the left-hand side. Toshiba's is small and slightly less hideous looking, with a cramped keyboard and centered screen that is, however, a very peculiar shape. Both PCs have a massive 512K, yes, 512 kilobytes of memory. Anyhow, not surprisingly, I prefer the Toshiba, but then again, that costs just under £1,000 compared to the Amstrad's 399. Amstrad, incidentally, was the company that really brought PCs into people's homes in the 1980s, in Britain anyway. They had a, a range of desktops and portables that were significantly cheaper than PCs from big companies such as IBM, Olivetti and Compaq. Now, in fact, I can see here that you could, uh, you could get an Amstrad PC with 640K of memory, one floppy drive, a monochrome monitor and a mouse for an astonishing £465. To put this in context, that has far, far less computing power than my mobile phone these days. But even so, for its time, this was pretty hot stuff. In Britain, at that time, Amstrad was the PC for home users. In fact, I was the editor at that time of a magazine called The Buyer's Guide to the Amstrad PC. Now, as time went on, prices came down and other companies got in on the act and so the magazine was later renamed to the PC Buyer's Guide. Anyhow, back to Computer Shopper. On, let's have a look on page 28, I see that there is an article I wrote all about the Modular 2 language. Modular 2 was the successor to Pascal. Niels Jensen, one of the founders of Borland, had established a team of programmers in London, uh, some of whom had previously worked on the Turbo Pascal compilers. Borland had been developing a Modular 2 compiler and Jensen, so I report here, had bought the rights to that and it wasn't cheap. The result, however, was top speed Modular 2. You can see that here on this PC and that was excellent. But sadly, the world was by that time besotted with C and C++. So Modular 2 never really became as big a success as some of us hoped it would. Now, a few pages later, I also have a review of Borland's latest compiler, Turbo Pascal 4. One of the improvements was the addition of units, which were kind of similar to modules in Modular, and also had improved string handling and graphics. And here is my first rants and raves column. Now, I went on to write that column for Computer Shopper for many, oh, many years. In fact, I later went on to write for another magazine, PC Plus, which continued to publish my rants and raves column. Anyway, let's see what's uh, in this first one. What am I ranting about in this first ever one? Well, I see that there's been a new release of Microsoft Word. That's Word for DOS. So a text screen word processor. Well, it now lets you hide all the menus and window frames uh, so that it occupies the full screen, which was just like Word Perfect. And in those days, Word Perfect was the dominant word processor. 
Uh, oh, and here's something about Microsoft QuickSee. What's that? Well, QuickSee is an all-in-one programming environment with a compiler and editor, which was still unusual back in those days. C programmers back then often used horrible, very, very basic text editors and then laboriously compiled and linked programs from the command prompt. But Borland had an integrated IDE called Turbo C and Microsoft felt under pressure to provide some competition. While on the subject of C, I, I noticed that I also mention here the cheekily named Zorland C. Cheeky because Zorland sounded more than slightly like Borland, and I suspect Borland might have noticed the similarity and not been too pleased. At any rate, I note here that Zorland has suddenly changed its name to Zortech. The Zorland or Zortech C compiler was technically brilliant, very fast and very cheap. The developer, Walter Bright, later went on to create his own language called D. On the whole, I have to say this was a very exciting time to be in computing. It was a time when PCs were increasingly starting to be used in the home. These were, let's face it, slow by modern standards and generally only had monochrome screens for displaying text, not graphics. And they didn't have sound, or well, they might have beeped, but they didn't have sound or video in the way that we would expect it today. Back then, of course, people weren't using the internet and they didn't have mobile phones. Even so, in 1988, home users were just starting to be introduced to the sort of computer technology that we soon began to take for granted. Anyway, that's it for March 1988. Uh, subscribe and all that stuff if you want to, and I'll be back with another peek into the past soon.